Here we've got this 2014 Buick Encore all-wheel drive. Now the owner of this vehicle actually works at the workplace with my wife. All right, so once she found out that I work on cars, she's like, hey, can you look at my car? My brakes aren't really working. So I thought it was gonna be, oh, something stupid, right? Something uh, like maybe the brake pads are low or something. She comes over here, the very first thing I notice is the road is destroyed. You can see that right there, right? And then I get a closer look and I'm like, oh, what's going on here? Look at this, guys. There's no brake pads, the brake pads fell out. You can see the piston on the caliper has completely pushed out. And another thing is, look at this. The caliper itself actually snapped. See that? So as soon as I saw this, I'm like, this thing has got to have no brakes at all. This is absolutely nuts. There must be no fluid in the system. So I get in the car. And sure enough, guys. There's absolutely no pedal pressure. There's no, I checked the master, absolutely no fluid in it, right? So I asked her, how long have you been driving like this? She said, oh, it's been about three weeks since the brakes stopped working and she drives this every day. So three weeks she's been driving like this, literally no brakes. It's absolutely nuts, crazy. So I looked at this car, I want to say like four or five days ago and i told her this is an emergency like this stuff needs to get done asap i put up you know prices from autozone i was like hey it's gonna run you like 300 and something dollars to go to autozone right now and get this fixed we could do it today i'll do it right now this is horrible you shouldn't be driving like this and she doesn't have the money to fix it because autozone prices are just too expensive so she started explaining how you know she would have to wait till she gets paid and then bills get paid and then things clear just to see how much money she has left over um, to see what she can afford. So my wife was like, you know what, just go ahead and order the parts for her car. I'll pay for the parts, she'll reimburse me later on. And uh, you know, let's just get this ball rolling, you know? So we ordered the parts from Rock Auto at way cheaper than AutoZone prices, right? So the parts came in, it's a few days later. She dropped the car off, well, she's here with the car. And we're gonna go ahead and get this done. And she was asking me about labor. I told her, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do this for a hundred dollars. So. We're changing rear pads, rear rotors, and a caliper, filling up the brake system and bleeding out the system. So I told her, I'm gonna do it for $100. She goes, really that cheap? I said, yeah, honestly, <laughs> I feel bad for you. Like, I'm not sugarcoating it, you know what I mean? I feel bad seeing the, the pinch that she's in financially. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, $100, it's fine. I'm not worried about it. Um, this is dangerous. You shouldn't be driving like this. So then another issue is she said, uh, I think her tail lights are out or something like that, right? So I ordered new bulbs for that. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bulbs on. And then she has a check engine light on, right? And she said she took it to a shop a while back and they said, basically it says something about purge during non-flow or something like that, right? Or flow during non-purge. And then there was a lean code. She said, yes, yeah, she took it to a shop. And the shop told her that it's the vent valve above the gas tank and that the whole gas tank has to come off and it's gonna be over $400 to fix it, right? I'm like, yeah. So anyways, I put my scanner on it and I saw the codes and I'm like, you know what? Pop the hood. Okay, so here goes the purge valve right here. You can see the electrical connector is disconnected. And look at this, it's pulling a vacuum even though it's not plugged in. This thing should not have vacuum. So I'm gonna go ahead will relieve the pressure or the vacuum. I'm gonna plug it back in to the, there it goes, look at that. It is pulling vacuum. So this purge valve is no good and I guarantee you, I don't wanna guarantee, but this is definitely a problem. And yes, it can cause both of those codes, the lean codes and the uh, flow during non-purge. All for a part. Look, I bought an OEM AC Delco part right here. We're gonna go ahead and get this changed out. I have a pretty good feeling that this is going to fix her issue and it was never the vent valve to begin with and we don't have to drop the gas tank and she doesn't have to pay four or five hundred dollars to get that fixed. So with the, you know, with replacing the light bulbs and then taking a few minutes or just literally like a minute of my time to diagnose the problem and then change this, she was like, well, how much are you going to charge me extra to do the tail lights, 
and the purge valve that's what i'm just going to include it in the hundred bucks i'm doing i'm not going to charge you anything extra we're just going to go ahead and get this fixed so what i want to start on is the brakes go ahead and get these rotors pads and rear right caliper installed and we'll put brand new brake fluid in the system we'll bleed it out and this thing should be all set and it doesn't help that it's almost 90 degrees today freaking hot out here hot and humid got the caliper off don't worry i'm not stressing the brake hose the caliper is touching the ground way before any stress comes on this hose all right so i just pulled out the bottom slide pin and you can see where the top one just snapped that's absolutely nuts i don't think i've ever seen anything like that what's funny is you can see the top slide pin isn't really seized it kind of moves freely i have no idea why this failed like this that's that's weird i think that's the first time for me anyway let's go ahead and pop off this bracket i guess it makes for an easy brake job when the caliper falls off all by itself and there's literally no pads on it <laughs> i found one of our brake pads so here's the front side of the rotor look at the back side that's crazy i can't imagine how horrible this thing sounded three weeks she's been driving like this and i guarantee you it's been sounding like crap even before the initial three weeks okay so for the sake of saving money i didn't buy the normal rotors that i always buy which are like the coated ones so we got just a regular standard non-coated rotor no different from what you would get from autozone same crap right uh, but it's gonna work just fine no issues at all with it but i did want to get a set of decent brake pads so you can see i got some ac delco pads here that's one thing i'm a firm believer on you could get away with cheap rotors most times okay they're gonna do their job it's just a chunk of steel right but pads get some decent pads all right uh so just about ready here cleaned up the surface here now it's ready get sprayed with some crc CRC before you put the hardware kit on and then you pull out the slide pins and make sure they have grease I added a little bit of extra grease on them. So they're good to go Here goes the bolts for the caliper bracket. They came with some thread locker on them from factory. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a uh, a Dab of blue thread locker on them before I put this thing on so all of this is pretty much set on this side it's looking pretty good So what I'm going to do now since I got the line connected and torqued down I'm going to go ahead and open the bleed valve, which is back here. We'll open this up right now. Let's start adding brake fluid into the system because it's going to take some time for the fluid to make its way back here. And uh, let's start with the gravity bleeding. There we go. Drink up, little buddy. Well, there's no point in watching paint dry. So let's just go on the rear left side and get the brakes knocked out over there. The valve right here is open, so we'll just give it some time, and once it starts dripping, we'll just uh, start with the bleeding process. There's a dead bee on the floor, and you can literally see the ants dragging the carcass away. Here on the rear left side, you can see that these pads are damn near ready to start grinding also. You know, it's funny is the pads say GM. See it? Looking at the condition of this car, I don't think it's ever been to the dealer. So, this is a 2014, guys. Here's the brakes on the rear left side. Yeah, it's pretty bad, right? I did open up the bleed valve on this caliper, and just after a few seconds, we started getting brake fluid out of here, so that's good. I went ahead and closed this valve. We still are not getting anything out of that side. So I may have to put my vacuum pump on it to start sucking or extracting the fluid out of it just to kind of give it a kick in the butt. Now we're starting to get something. As you can see, I pulled out the vacuum pump, put it on the bleed valve, and I also had to get in the car and pump the brake pedal a few times. But we are finally getting brake fluid out of this thing. So the pads on this side were completely locked in place, so I had no choice but to put this thing in a sandblaster, cleaned up the surface right there of where the hardware kit's going to go. And now the pads are fit nice and smooth how they should. Let's go ahead, clean and re-grease these pins and start putting everything back together. You can see the pads move freely with just the right amount of resistance. It's just something so satisfying about new rotors, new pads, and then the uh, bracket sandblasted and everything just works perfect. So this side is all set. Now let's start the real bleeding process and uh, Hopefully get this thing knocked out soon because it's, it's hot out here. <laughs> Sweating bullets out here. So I think I'm all done bleeding the brakes. As you can see, I got the front wheels off. So 
This thing has had a complete brake fluid flush. The whole system has brand new fluid in it. I bled at each caliper and the pedal feels decent to me. We can't uh, stress it too much because remember the front rotors, front pads, all that stuff is worn out too. So I'm not gonna go crazy with the way the pedal feels, but it feels absolutely fantastic compared to the way this thing came in. So what I want to do now is let's pop the wheels on it. Let's take it out for a test drive. So I got the wheels back on it. I'm ready to take it out, but I figure, you know what? This purge valve takes one minute to change. So let's go ahead and do that. I already got it knocked out. See, here goes the old one. New one is installed. And like the new chicken fajita from Taco Bell, it's good to go. Not a sponsor. Before we go out for a test drive, let's check the codes because I have to clear them right now. Uh, you can see we got a fuel trim system lean. We have a catalyst efficiency code. Uh, personal control circuit, that was me, I had it unplugged. Sorry about the beeping sound. Uh, here goes the one that was originally here. System flow during non-purge. And then that code was there. All right, let's check for codes one more time. Okay, good, no codes. Now I did not drive it beforehand because obviously the pedal was going to the floor and there was no fluid in the system. There was no reason to drive it. It just putting myself in danger. So <laughs> I knew it didn't stop. You know what I mean? Uh, but it stops now. Now to me, I'm not 100% satisfied with the pedal, but I've bled at each caliper. I want to say three times each. And I could not get any more air to come out the system. Every time I opened up the, the bleed valve, there was nothing but fluid coming out of each one. And just so I'm clear, the pedal doesn't feel spongy at all. It feels like it has good pressure. It's just, it feels like it's happening really low in the, in the travel of the pedal, if you get what I'm saying. So here's the bowl that was out. I've already gone ahead and changed it. So right now, I got the brake pedal depressed. So you can see we have our brake light. And if I release the brake pedal and leave the headlights on, so the headlights are on. There you go. Yeah, so basically what was going on with the old one is like only the brake lights would come on, but the other light when you had your, he your headlights on, for instance, like the daytime running lights, the bulb wasn't working. So it's uh, one bulb that does two things, and if one of them fails, you gotta replace the bulb. Well, I thought it was only this side that was out, but this side as well. All right, we'll just change both. And there we go. It's hard to tell, but it is on, so. And of course, I couldn't finish this job without at least hurting myself. I ended up slicing open my thumb right there. When I was changing the purge valve, I think I was pulling on it, and my finger slipped, and I think my own fingernail went right into the corner right there. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so, you guys know me already. I couldn't leave good enough alone, right? So I ended up bleeding at the master cylinder and I didn't get any air out of it, just brake fluid. And honestly, it didn't make much of a difference, uh, but the car still stops perfectly fine. The thing is I had to try it. If I didn't try bleeding at the master, then I would have always been like, what if, right? <laughs> so I had the owner take it out for a test drive just to see what she thinks. And now these are her words, not mine. She said, when I actually push the brake pedal, the car responds. She said, it's no longer loud anymore. The brakes sound nice and quiet and it's a thousand times better. Now those are her words, okay? She said a thousand times better. I can only imagine how bad this thing was once you brought it in. So she is absolutely ecstatic about the way how it stops now. Um, brake lights are working, got the new purge valve on. Yeah, so you're probably wondering why would you do all that work for a hundred bucks? You know, you did all that work, you're in the heat, slice your hand open, a hundred bucks and my answer to that is I know for some people it is but for me it's not always about money it's about helping people um, and if you want to go crazy about me doing all this work for a hundred bucks well it's a good thing I don't record everything I do because there's plenty of times where I've either done something for free or I lower the prices that it just it's it's a joke you know but it's really it really comes down to helping people in need I know some people get worked up over uh, the low prices that I charge and say I'm screwing myself over left and right. Hey, if I'm okay with helping people, you should be okay with it too. Anyway, that's it guys. That's it for this one. It's fixed and I'm sure we'll see this car later on in the future.